Right at the beginning of this, I said to you, integrals, integration has to do with area. But it's, it's a different kind of area. It's like area, but not. Um, it's area, but not your grandma's area, okay? We have to treat it a little more carefully. There are nuances you have to watch out for. So the key is in how the question is phrased. And let me give you two counter examples, okay? Let's come back to this guy over here, right? Now, it's part of a straight line. And if you saw this function and they said, okay, let's, let's call it y equals 2x. Let's just say that's what it is. That's what it looks like. And let's call this value negative 1 to 0. Okay? Now, if I asked you, if a question posed to you in the HSC, what is the shaded area? Just mind the way the question has been asked. What is the shaded area? It's not a trick question. Have they said anything about integrals? No, they have not. Have they said anything about signed areas? No, they have not. The question is just, what's the area? How big is that thing? Okay. In which case, if you see it underneath the axis, but they don't say anything about integrals, they don't think, say anything about sign, they're just saying, how big is it? Right? So you need to call that a positive area. Because just like lengths, like in Pythagoras, you work out a hypotenuse, you're used to disregarding the negative, because lengths are positive. Well, areas in themselves, also positive. Okay. So if the question said, what's the area? Give, like, work out the triangle and then just say, I don't know, like five square units. Full stop, no negatives. Okay? If, on the other hand, and this is the exact reverse kind of question, okay, they will pose you actual questions like this. You see them in your textbook when I give you the HSC practice questions on this topic, you'll see them as well. They will say, for something like this, I'm just going to get rid of my answer for a second, they will say, evaluate the integral of f of x. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 6. Okay? So this is a very different kind of question, right? It's closely related. Areas are still involved. But because it says work out an integral, work out an integral, now you have to pay attention to where the areas are. Does that make sense? I have to pay attention to position. So how would I actually do this? Well, let's work out the areas above the x-axis first. Tell me what kind of shape is there. I know it's a bad diagram, but just... Yes. Looks like a rectangle, right? To work out the area of a rectangle, you just need width and height. So therefore, you would say, OK, well, that's going to be 2 times 3. Sorry, I have a bad vertical scale. You get the idea. Okay? That's above the axis. Then you've got this guy, which is a semicircle. right? Uh, that center there would be 4, which makes its radius what? 2. So because it's a semicircle, I would say a half pi r squared. That's the area of a semicircle. But of course, look at where the semicircle is. It is beneath the x-axis. Does that make sense? So because the question has said to you, tell me what the integral is, now you pay attention to your position. Whereas over here, when they said, tell me what the area is, it's just a measurement question. Nothing to, nothing to do with calculus and all that fancy stuff. Okay? So then you would say, that's 6 take away 2 pi. Sorry, that's, yeah, that's squared. That's going to be negative 0 0.28 something something something, which is negative because that semicircle ends up being bigger than that rectangle. Okay? Does that make sense? So you have to pay attention to the wording of the question quite carefully. And you will get more used to that. Like, don't worry about like, oh man, I need to memorize this right now. As you do more questions, you will get the practice and you'll get a sense for it. Uh, but I'm just flagging it right now. Pay attention to the way it's worded. Look at the diagram and answer accordingly. Okay.